Welcome back everybody. So this was a highly requested tutorial. Loads of you always comment on my nails and last year I filmed how I use the Builder Gel in a bottle. So today I'm going to show you how I create this French ombre which is also known as Baby Boomer Nails. And this product really is super durable. It doesn't come off until I remove it. I either soak it off or I use an e-file. I will still include a little bit on how I build my base colour but I do have a dedicated tutorial for that and I'm going to link it on screen for you now. The base colour I use in that tutorial is identical to this one except for this tutorial it was more about how I achieve that ombre finish. So much like before I'm going to start with acetone and I'm going to just clean over my nails. I've already removed the colour that I previously had on my nails so they are good to go. I just want to make sure there's no oils on the nail bed before I start. The polish I'm using today is by The Gel Bottle, this is also known as Builder in a Bottle. They do normal gel polishes but they also do the Builder Gels. The colour I'm going to be using is Teddy. You are required to have a licence in order to be able to purchase this gel. However for the ombre you can still use the same techniques with ordinary polish, it's just it works so much better on a gel. So when you're using Teddy you do not need a base coat, you just need to make sure that there are no oils on your nail bed. I did include prep in the previous tutorial so check that out if you want to see how I prep my nails ready for polish. I'm also much much more thorough on how to use this product in that video so definitely check that one out first and then you can come back to this one because this is just more to show you the ombre effect but obviously I know you're going to want to see how I apply the base coat so I'm just going to skim through it. I like my nails to be as thin as possible when it comes to using gel. This stuff is rock solid, you can even open up tins with your nails and my natural nails are wafer thin so this stuff has been an absolute game changer for me. During this setup, because I'm in my new room, I must admit I'm quite far away from the camera and I'm trying to point my nails towards the camera rather than being sat directly underneath my nose where I can see them up close. So I'll be honest, they will not be my best work, but the result will still be lovely and you'll still get an idea. It's just I like to work up close, but for this obviously, for you guys to be able to see it, I need to lean back so I'm not blocking the light or in the way of the camera. So to give you a brief overview of what I'm doing, I'm applying the Builder Gel as a base layer first. Then this is going to cure for 99 seconds in the gel bottle lamp. I specifically bought the lamp for this because you do tend to get heat spikes and this lamp is made for this gel and I found that the low setting that they do for this gel prevents you from getting heat spikes. Another thing I really love about this product is its staying power for the shine as well. The top coat that we use is so shiny and it stays shiny till you remove it. Once that first layer is cured, I'm then going to go in with a very fine second layer which is kind of like a slip layer. It's going to be the footprint for where your next layer of gel is going to sit. So you don't cure this layer, instead this is going to stay wet and because it's thin it's not going to go anywhere. And when we apply our next layer which is going to build the nail, it will know where to go. So now we've got that slip layer down, we're going in with a bigger bead and we're going to use a pat in motion to very gently distribute the gel. And this is going to enable us to build up the nail. We're going to very slowly work that down the length of the nail, making sure that the apex is the fullest part. And to do that, we're gonna make sure that we turn our hand over so that gravity can pull the gel into the center, which is the apex, and that's going to give you your shape. Now you do need to work fast because you don't want the gel to slip into the side walls because it will puddle there if you're not careful. So if you're quite new to it, you might want to rotate your hand a few more times to make sure that the majority of the product is slipping to the very centre and that's going to give you some work in time. One of the most valuable tips I picked up with this product is to use a fine liner brush because it makes it easier for you to pull that gel down into the side walls making sure it's nice and smooth so it's really met the edge and you can use the tip of the brush to pull the gel over the free edge. So I'm going to leave you to watch me build up the nails I'm going to come back when it comes to the ombre.
So I've done a full solid cure on these nails. I'm now going to remove the shine, which is a really important step. So I'm gonna use acetone. Do not worry, this will not ruin your nails. You're only using a very tiny amount. It's simply just to knock back that shine. I've also done this with 99% IPA, also known as isopropanol alcohol, and that worked. So your nails should look nice and semi-mattified. So I'm going in with my palette. Don't worry, it's got some smear marks because I've just sanitized it. And on that, I'm going to place this white high pigment gel by Biosculpture. These are available in a variety of different colours. Obviously, I'm using white and they are perfect for any form of nail art. And then along with that, I got the puffer set also from Biosculpture. These were designed to use with the Biosculpture Pink Paste to help conceal the epinicium line. If you're a nail person, then you'll know what I'm talking about. But they are also brilliant for creating ombre baby boomer nails. As you can see, I've used a tiny amount of the high white pigment and I've dipped my sponge into a very light amount of that. Now the key here is to really, really work this onto your palette so that you've only got a very light amount on the sponge. This is gonna enable you to create an almost seamless ombre effect. You'll instantly know if you've applied too much of this product to your sponge because when you print it on your nail, it will take on the shape of the sponge. What you want is such a light amount that it doesn't leave a shape behind. Instead, it just leaves a very soft veil of color. And the key really is to use the lightest hand when you are doing this. If you press too hard, when you're layering this color to build up the opacity, you're going to take the color back off. I've seen that some people like to cure each layer. I found that if you use a light amount, you really don't need to worry about that. Use a light hand, do it in soft light layers, and then you don't have to cure it in between. You can just cure it at the end. And actually, I have done this where I didn't cure it at all and I went straight in with the top coat, but you are playing a dangerous game there because sometimes it can smear and you will need to do that nail again. Curing it before a top coat doesn't mean that it's got any durability it can actually still come away very, very easily. All it does is almost just seal it enough that you can go over it with your top coat without leaving any brush marks. If you were looking for quite a stark white tip, don't be tempted to apply too much to your sponge and just go in straight in, because again, you won't get that lovely gradient. Instead, be very, very patient and layer it up till you are happy. I've done two layers on these nails and I like quite a soft finish, but it is still quite light at the ends and it obviously becomes much more visible once you apply your clear top coat. My sister and I have actually been wearing the Baby Boomer style with a clear builder rather than the shade Teddy. Having the clear rather than the pinky base almost makes it look that much more natural, but obviously when it grows out, you start to see your natural smile line coming through. So now I've cured that, I'm going in with my Extreme Shine Top Coat, also by the Gel Bottle. It's the only brand I use. I don't do this professionally anymore. I just do it for myself and for my sister, and this is my preference of brand. When you're applying the top coat over this pigment, it's a good idea to apply a bit more than you ordinarily would, because you do not want your bristles to disturb that white, otherwise you'll have to start it again. If you do accidentally scratch it and you need to start again, just wipe it off with either the acetone or the IPA. That will strip it back to your teddy color that you cured and then you can start your ombre again. You can see now, once the base color goes on, how much more obvious the contrast between the pink and the white is. It's so soft and beautiful. It would be perfect for bridal or any special occasion. And I find it to be a little bit more of a classy finish compared to the original French, which I find can be quite stark. You don't have to use Teddy as your base. You can use any color. I would ordinarily go for number 19 when I'm kind of this color. Having a tan with Teddy kind of makes Teddy look a little bit pink on me. Whereas I find this color looks better on me in the winter when I'm a little bit paler. Number 19 has a little bit more of a peachy finish, which I think looks so much nicer with a tan, but I'm currently all out and I need to order a new one. So this is the finished result. I hope you love it. It is definitely one of my absolute favorites. And it really is such a simple technique. It does take a little bit of practice in terms of really understanding about how much you need to work that color off of your sponge. But once you've got it, you'll be absolutely perfect at it. So if you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out the original tutorial for more of an in-depth application. And I will see you next week. Bye, guys.